I'm out motor camping in the wilderness and I needed to record a video talking about three of three. This is two, three. What happens when you buy a motorcycle and you want to ride it, you don't know what to do. You picked the motorcycle, you bought it, but now you'd like some tips on what to do with the bike, namely on how to get it street legal. Oh, the sun's breaking right through. Now I'm gonna be like, Psh, like this. So I'll just, no. Oh, if I stay over here, it blocks the sun. Well, we're just gonna have the sun and I guess, okay. The most important document is the title. It's a piece of paper that has the vehicle information on it. It's the VIN number, the make and model, has your name on it. And the second most important thing you're gonna need at the DMV is a proof of insurance document. You need to have insurance on the vehicle and you can get your vehicle insured through whoever and however you want. You have to have a state minimum for collision insurance. Collision insurance is in case you're at fault, essentially, and comprehensive insurance is optional I always have comprehensive though, that's in case anything else, that's in case, uh, I don't know, it could be flooding or fire, but typically theft. Uh, your standard insurance will cover anything except for wear and tear and mechanical failure. But you need to have title, insurance, and of course you also have to have your ID. Now this is when you actually have to have had your endorsement. You need to have a class M on your license. And we'll talk about how to get that in a bit. But when you go to DMV, title, insurance, ID with a motorcycle endorsement that says you're allowed to drive it. In fact, I'll demand myself right here and leave this in the edit. I'm not positive you actually have to have that when you go in. I don't think you have to be right, I don't know. Who knows? But we'll, we'll, you, I'm gonna, you, if you wanna ride it legally, you do have to be endorsed and I'll get to that. So two optional documents. First of all is bill of sale. Not every state requires it, some do. A bill of sale is a document that you and the seller have signed that basically bolsters or affirms that yes, this is who we are and this is the transaction that took place, this is the vehicle that was sold, and this is how much money was spent. Depending on what state you're in or where you bought it, you may have to do a vehicle inspection. In Kansas, if you buy a vehicle from out of state, you have to go to the Highway State Patrol, spend about $25 to have them look at it for 10 minutes, assuming there is no line. It's not a big deal, but your state may require that as well and may require that document. It may be a digital one, it may be a physical one. So going to the DMV, you could need as many as five documents to get your vehicle registered. You could need, you will need title, proof of insurance, maybe an endorsement, might need a bill of sale, might need an inspection. It's a lot of things, if it's your first time getting a bike, it could be overwhelming, but um, just look for those five and the more you do it, the easier it gets. Okay, so you got the motorcycle, you wanna be able to ride it legally, so let's talk about endorsement. For endorsement, you kind of have two, maybe three options. The most typical and probably the one I would recommend is an MSF course. That is something you can take probably at a local college, a community college. There are several courses around, but it's a course that is taught at different schools. And how these typically work is it's two days to a week. I, I'm not sure. Um, they provide you a motorcycle and you take driving tests out in a lot with an instructor, with other students. And after the days are over, you have an endorsement. You can just take the certification from that class and go to the DMV, the uh, the driver's license DMV, not the uh, car DMV in Kansas, it's different. That says, yes, I can get endorsed for motorcycle, let me drive this now. Uh, you can also take your own motorcycle to MSF if you want, but the MSF is good because it's the most accessible. You pay a flat fee of, again, it depends, I'd say 250 roughly for two days or five days, however long it is, and there you go, all in one package. You get your bike, you get your training, you get your endorsement. It's the best deal, I'd say. Private places also have endorsement courses. I know Harley Davidson's, or at least some of them have uh, endorsement courses. They teach additional courses as well, but uh, you might look at uh, local motorcycle dealerships, uh, private parties, because they may have a course you can take as well. You might prefer it because you might want to ride their bikes instead of whatever one the college is going to have. The third one is the Sketchway. It's my way, the way I learned. Just do it by yourself, just learn. Um, I bought a bike and I took it to a parking lot and I just rode it around for a couple weeks until I felt like, yeah, I, I think I have it figured out. And then I went with my knowledge of my own bike to the DMV and took their driving test, motorcycle driving test, and I passed that which was a very easy test. I can't say what it was or what yours is going to be, but if you want to go at your own pace and save 250 bucks, if you have your own motorcycle and you're willing to just drop it and learn on it, that's a way you can do it too. That's really all the important stuff if you didn't know how to do any of that. So the next section is ownership. With your motorcycle, you want to be watching your oil, your tires, and your chain and making sure you get the service intervals. You can do oil changes yourself, 
make sure you look up the oil service interval or the mate motorcycle service interval for your bike and make sure you're doing the oil changes yourself or getting it done by your dealer among the other intervals that you might have my bike required oil at 6,000 but at 12,000 miles required that and then a timing chain tension which I can't do so took it to my dealership for that make sure you're getting those your chain typically a good practice is to lube it every 100 miles that might be a bit much but lubing it more frequently will prolong the life of your chain so it's a good habit to have also tires far more important that your tires aren't low on a motorcycle on the street than in a car you might be able to afford having one low tire on a car that's 25 percent down but on a bike that's 50 percent down and if you're unaware of it because your bike's handling is so heavily dependent on it it's important to regularly check your tire pressure it'll have your tire pressure max load on the side of each tire typically don't fill your bike to the max but maybe close those tires are max of 41 i keep them at 36 and uh, the only reason you might air them down is you're going off road anyway just make sure your tires aren't getting flat aside from it being potentially dangerous will also prolong the life of your tire rider etiquette um I wasn't able to think of anything except for, uh, number one, let your bike warm up. It's not an economy car, it's a performance vehicle, most likely, which means it's meant to have the valves warmed before they're stressed. So it's not, you shouldn't get on a bike, sport bike in the winter, wow, wow, it, it, it's a cold start and rev it. You shouldn't do that. You can do whatever you want, but if you want to treat your bike well, cold start, let it warm up for uh, at least a minute that helps a lot to prolong the life of the vehicle also if you're on a motorcycle you get to do the bike wave now so if you want to know how that works it's really simple it's just two fingers you can distribute these fingers however you want most people do palm up and they extend their arm out like this they'll wave to another motorcycle when they see one oncoming they may do palm forward they may do off the handle they might do this but this is most typical just two fingers and it's really fun at the start because you get people with me hey uh, Anyway, motorcycle wave. I wanted to write do's and don'ts. There's only one do that I thought of in the time it took me to wake up, and that is riding in staggered formation. Whether you're riding with strangers or friends, you're out on your own, and you see a motorcycle and you catch up to them. However, the correct way to ride, and you would have learned this if you took the MSF course, is to ride in staggered formation. And staggered essentially is lead driver on the left side of the lane, follower on the right side, and that just alternates, third driver, left, right, left, right. As opposed to being directly behind the driver. You, there's no reason to do that. The lane's wide enough for two motorcycles, do this for safety. And when you're doing staggered formation, just because you're not directly behind, doesn't mean you get to be right there. Your distance behind anyone, even a bike in staggered formation, shouldn't be any different than if you were following a car in traffic. So give them their space and so on. So just, um, unless you know the rider, and you guys trust each other, or if you're at idle and you're going really slow, there's no reason to be next to each other or this close. Keep each other your space. And the reason for this is because this way you have time to react. If you're right here and this driver sees a squirrel and has to do this, he'll either hit you or freak you out. So just give each other time and space. Now I have like 30 seconds to think of rider don'ts before I gotta put the camera away and pack up and get on with this trip. This isn't really a don't, but don't be afraid to make mistakes. You are going to find new limits for yourself and your riding abilities by pushing yourself however slightly every once in a while for me personally <laughs> depending on whatever bike i'm on i think i know what my max lean angle is in any given situation with my bike but every once in a while every few months i'll go maybe i was wrong maybe i can go a little bit more and then i'll get the skid and i'll freak out I'll go okay yep that's it that's the max i'm glad i know what the limit is but that's an example of pushing yourself and I'm not saying go hard but don't be afraid to make mistakes it's how you learn oh maybe a don't mistake is uh, make sure the kickstands all the way up and when I started there were a couple times where I thought my bike was broken it won't start it's not working it's because the kickstand wasn't all the way up and the sensor hadn't been tripped and it wouldn't allow the bike to start I guess that's something bonus section I was going to say how I've changed as a rider and I have changed as a rider I've been riding for almost 11 years now and I've owned over 10 motorcycles I'd say 15 I've changed as a person also. That's probably mostly just because I'm getting old. Um, I think the cool thing about all of it is motorcycles change, preferences change. I like different bikes than I did back then and I like bikes that didn't exist back then that exist now. So it's a the bikes can change with you. It's a cool thing. It's a cool thing, not important. But I think that's all I have to say about that. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys for watching this. I have to peck.
all my stuff and get on to the wilderness. So thank you guys for watching. Bye. Sorry, what'd you say? Okay.